So as you guys know, we've been in the sign industry for a long time. And when we usually get a large sign project, we do everything in-house. So we design it, we engineer it, we permit it, we build it, paint it, and install it all ourselves. But sometimes we get called in just to consult or maybe even just help out on a project. I've known Aaron Childs from Highlight Services for over 30 years now. His company specializes in high-rise sign and lighting installs all over the country. And when I say high-rise, I'm talking skyscrapers. So when I heard that he was involved in this project, I knew, if nothing else, this was going to be very interesting. The project is to put these massive, what, five-foot-tall letters on the side of this building, uh, a couple hundred feet in the air, right? And um, you had the letters already ready to go. You're installing them on the building, but you ran into an issue. Yeah, the letters themselves are 12 inches deep, and they're 90 pounds a piece. Yeah, big old heavy letters. So we repelled over to do a survey of the building. We were told that it was concrete. Yeah. Um, we drilled our first hole, and it was stucco and foam with, wow. with, with no bracing. The client actually hired us to cut a hole and stick our hand in there to find out what was inside. Um, we and what was inside? Air. <laughs> uh, so we actually uh, backed out and um, had all the letters on the roof ready to roll. Yeah. We had to take them down and come up with a new solution. So that's yep. when you and came involved. On a project like this, there was all kinds of people involved, right? Yeah, I mean, who, who, like, who were you working for initially when you went out to get those letters on the side of the building? So I'm not going to mention the names, but we had a, uh, a sign company locally that hired us to go out and put just the letters up. Okay. That didn't work. Um, and I think they had the project pulled from them. Okay. And then uh, Oakhurst Signs reached out to us to install the letters. Nice. Um, okay. And then you had someone else reach so out to you. So then Gomez Contracting is right. the GC that's actually remodeling the building. And the owner, uh, you know, uh, Northland Properties, uh, uh, the guy you know that represents Northland is Andrew Atwood. And he called Gomez and said, hey, do you have anybody that can help out with this project? So Gomez brought us into the project. You guys are there. We already knew the project from you telling me, oh, my God, we got these giant letters that go in airspace. And nobody's, you know, there's no way to put them on the building. But so, then we brought our buddy Bruce in from Electronic Science systems who we have also all known for 30 years Great guy. for more manpower oh yeah he's a fabulous yeah wow, it's like a family reunion up in here. <laughs> so, so uh, the contractor brought us in on the project to see if we could help out come up with a solution of how we're gonna mount these letters on the wall and uh, we came up with this idea of this framework that we could actually mount on the wall and then the, the the letters would have to be mounted to some type of a pan or a panel that would attach to the framework but how were we attaching the framework to the to the wall? Well, the only thing we have is those are the uh, concrete slabs on each floor, yeah. right? Well, you can't use blocking because we'd have to go into people's apartments to put blocking on the wall behind it to support it. We actually, when we took the drill to drill the hole, we took a 18-inch drill bit, mm -hmm. and we actually almost went into a person's bathroom because <laughs> oh, we went in and hit, we hit air and it just kept going and kept going yeah it's so, so we were pretty crazy, shocked huh? we were shocked when wow. we went up there once we get the actual layout of the building and figure out where each floor is and get a survey done so we can figure out if that's accurate then we can kind of go from there and make a whole framework that we can mount to the building okay so what about this so you typically repel off the side of the building on a rope but this is going to be some pretty big massive structures we're putting up there so we might have to do it off a swing stage swing stage there'll be no cranes that was yep. one of the stipulations they it's in front of a Publix. they said absolutely not blocking the street yeah. nor the mm -hmm. sidewalk yeah this is downtown orlando right it's like a right. heavily yeah, traveled you know area right. Right. Like Yola, yeah yeah okay so that's the other stipulation we have to lift these heavy letters mm -hmm. with the new structure without any cranes wow so we'll have to do the structure in pieces yeah pieces that'll bolt together i guess and Mm -hmm. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. We Welcome to the project. <laughs> Thanks, sir. <laughs> All right. Appreciate it, man. What we're going to end up doing is we created a frame that would mount directly to their letters without them having to modify them, but still work with the new mounting system that we're having to design. So each individual letter has to be on its own frame, and then each frame has to slide into the next. And that will have to run the entire 72 feet of framework in order to support the weight of these 200-pound letters. So as a result of us having to do these ladder bars in order to support all the extra weight, now 
Oakhurst has to come in and actually create a skin that covers all of our framework so that it looks like it's just part of the building so that the letters can be mounted directly over the top. So we came up with this as the interior brackets that will go inside the wall and then be closed in with the stucco all the way up to it, just leaving a portion of this sticking out for our framework to attach to. The hole has to get cut in the wall at every floor. This goes inside the wall, gets bolted through the concrete floor of every story, and then the wall gets finished up around this. So only this much of this bracket will be sticking out of the wall. That way the frame can slide right on it and it gets bolted through. And then for our surface mount brackets, we have these, which will still mount directly to all the framework, but they'll be using toggle bolts at the very top and bottom to just kind of give it some extra support. So Ben and Saul are gonna go out and they're gonna actually put up all these brackets on each floor. But once the, once the brackets are mounted and, and everything is in place where it needs to be and, and we make sure that everything is lined up, then Gomez Construction is gonna come in and they're gonna fill in all the holes in the wall and uh, make it look like we were never in there. And the only thing that will be left is our brackets protruding from the wall that our framework will attach to. And then once all of that is completed, then Bruce from Electronic Sign Systems is gonna come in. He's gonna run up and down in the swing stage and attach all of this framework to be able to support the weight of all of these letters. All right, so today we're gonna get the Paramount letters up on the wall. Yesterday we got all the preliminaries out of the way, all the measurements, made sure everything was good. So today we got the first letter up and ready. We're getting it prepped, running the power, putting the dressings on it. Now we're gonna be hoisting them up. We're gonna be doing it out of a swing stage, but the letters are going up on a hoist system. So when we're ready to go, we're gonna hook up the P, fly it up, and we're gonna follow it up in the swing stage and get it set on the frame system that's pre-mounted. Put beaners on it, just clip it around. That's fine, we can put a beaner on there. That's what we're discussing now versus choking it. Putting a carabiner on there so it's easier just to undo the carabiner versus choking it the way I was putting it. I just didn't want it, if we put weight on it, I don't want this getting pinched up in there and then we can't release the beaner without banging on it. So we can put it up front, I'm okay with that. So when you're up there like really, really high, that doesn't bother you at all? No, see, the, the, heights, the heights never bothered me. The only thing that kind of is always in the back of my mind is I don't ever want to drop anything. That's, that's what my main focus is most of the time. But the heights really is, has never bothered me. I've always been comfortable on rope, more so than in a lift sometimes. How'd you get started in this? So Aaron Childs, the founder of the company, is actually my father. So if you can't find good employees, you just got to make them, I guess. So what we do, since we're all rope access trained and certified, we use our harnesses that we rappel in to do swing stage work. We also bring extra equipment that other sign companies usually don't have with them. So for some reason, if, if this swing stage fails on us, if a motor burns up, if we lose power, if the building catches on fire, which we've had once before, while we were on a swing stage, we had a building evacuate while we were in the swing stage and they killed the power. So if anything emergency, we can actually rappel out of the swing stage and come to the ground and leave the swing stage where it's at for anything uh, safety wise. So this is kind of a little extra precaution because we're all rope access. So the certification that we use, it's called SPRAT, stands for the Society of Professional Rope Access Technicians. They are the governing body for rope access in America. There are other divisions that cover other countries but Sprat is the America. So it is a week long, probably about a 70 hour course that you have to take. Uh, to up your certification at any point in time, you have to have no less than 500 hours on rope or a minimum of one year with on the job training. Once we pick up these letters, really with any load, what we do is we wanna make sure we watch to see how it's gonna hang. Once it's off the ground, at all times, we have eyes on it and really hands on it. We wanna make sure that we're guiding it up. It's not gonna hit anything, get stuck. We're not gonna chafe a rope. So really, once the letter is picked up, it's hands on until it's in place and on the wall. So this building in particular has a lot of uh, special architecture going up the side, a lot of build outs. The way that we have this letter rig that wants to ride close to the building so that way it's easy to fit in the frame system. So it is a bit tricky when we're coming up, we want to make sure that we're holding the letter away from all the uh, decorative build outs. 
not breaking any glass, gouging the building at all. We also have to watch the load lines that the pulleys are running through to make sure they're not getting snagged on any letters, uh, they're not chafing. So really we have eyes and hands on the entire time. It's, there's a lot of moving parts going as these letters are going up the wall. get this one screwed in we're gonna have to come down and get the letter itself we can't even clear this letter without the face on it so what's going on is um, we removed the face of the letter which eliminated 12 inches off the front of that panel we were thinking that we'd be able to go around the letter with the swing stage but the swing stage is so tight to the wall even with that letter removed we still couldn't get out around the, the base of that letter. We originally were going to install all the panels and then come up and put all the faces on after. But since we can't clear the letter uh, without the face on it, we have to put the face together, we have to wire it, we have to do all the touch-up because we can't go with the swing stage past the bottom letter to get to any of the letters. So we have to make sure everything at the top is buttoned up. All the letters are in, all the faces are in, all the wires are tied in. So that first letter is going to be 100% before we can go to the next letter. All right, so we're day two, Orlando, Florida. We went from 80 to now in the 40s. We're ready when you are. So with the letters being in the way, we had to switch up a game plan. We're still going to be bringing uh, swing stage up to secure the letter on the wall, but as far as the power connections go, I'm gonna to have to climb out of the stage on a secondary rope and we're gonna be transitioning from swing stage to rope access. So to transition from the swing stage to the rope access portion is really no problem. All, it, all I'm gonna be doing is from standing in the stage, my safety's gonna stay hooked up. I'm just gonna hook up to a descending mechanism. I'm going to ascend a couple feet up, make the connection and just rappel back down into the swing stage. I need an electrical fitting for this piece of conduit to squeeze over the top. The things I'm always looking out for while I'm hanging on rope, number one, I always want to make sure my safety stays above my chest, so that way if something happens to my main line, I don't have a too far to fall. Second thing, I'm always looking at where my main line runs, so that way I make sure that I'm not chafing on anything. Pull it up. Got about a foot and a half gap until we close it up. Got to make this electrical connection. And then this is going to get tucked in behind. I always try to be as conscious as possible when I'm doing actual work over the wall. Specifically, I don't drop anything. Connections are made. Dan, are you copy? Yeah, you raise it up about a foot. Keep going, keep going. So this keep sign going, in particular, going. these letters stand off the wall quite a bit, more so than uh, some of the signs we've done before. And with these ropes having so much tension on them, they are wanting to pull on and rub on these letters. So we're having to be very careful we don't chafe our rope on these sharp might, letters. Might have to, I have to try to put these behind the A. You want me to try to get him behind the A? You're not going to do it now, no. You're not going to be able to. You don't think? If push nope. towards me, I might be able to. You're not going to be able to get this side. Uh, I don't want you cutting the rope. If you cut the rope, this thing's going down, dude. I know. Can you put your foot on the center? Push in. So as anybody in the sign industry knows, this is a very dangerous job without having the added hurdle involved with being on ropes. These signs are very heavy and we are using mechanical advantages to pull. So there's a lot of forces involved. And every once in a while, things will drop, slide, kick. And if your fingers are in the way, you're gonna lose some meat. Oh, there we go. What's holding it out? Nothing, I'm in flush up top here, man. I'm perfectly lined up with the one above it. Well, that sucks a little tiny bit. 
That was fun. Can I get the drill and a couple of screws? Got it. So something that's important to remember, uh, anytime you're working on something on the ground while you're standing on two feet, if you drop a screw or a drill or a screwdriver, it's no big deal, you bend over and pick it up. When you're 300 feet in the air, anything that you drop as small as the smallest tech screw could so easily go through somebody's windshield, if not their head. So anything that's dropped is a potential for hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage or could be potentially life-threatening. So that's why we make sure everything that we touch has a tether on it. There's no room for error. So obviously there are some things that can't be tethered, such as tech screws, bolts, nuts, washers. So anytime I have one in my hand, I'm always focused on what I'm doing to prevent the hazard of me dropping something. And as I'm pulling tech screws or nuts and bolts out of my bag, I'm always laser focused at what I'm doing at the time just to make sure I don't drop them. Hello, Zern. This is a second notice that the factory warranty on your vehicle may have expired and should be reactivated mm -hmm. to protect you against the cost of repairs. No affordable... We're kind of busy right now. Can you call me back? The this second call while I've been on the swing stage for my extended warranty. I've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. All the way up here on the 17th floor. So when you're up in the air a couple hundred feet, some of the most important things that you have to look out for is rope management. We have a lot of ropes going over the wall and a lot of ropes with a lot of weight on them. So you always want to make sure you're not getting tangled up and your workspace is free. So we're always watching these ropes to make sure that we're not going to cross, get pinched, to cause any problems later on down the road. Uh, for me, it's, it's tighter coming out of the stage because there's steel, the steel cables that the stage rides on the sign that's in front of me. So I'm having to be as careful as I can as I'm climbing up, make sure I don't kick the sign off the frame system and I'm not caught in between the swing stage while I'm climbing. Oh, and another thing, a little fact I can share with you, Tom, doing signs off rope primarily has taught me a little trade secret. Now I only wear climbing shoes. So that way I can grab on the shit with my feet. We made bit. it look magical, but it wasn't magical. Uh, well, there's a lot to our process of getting the sign up with the rope access, swing stage, uh, the equipment we use to haul letters. They say on TV all the time, don't try this at home. Really don't try this at home unless you get the uh, right certifications and you have all the right gear. I just wouldn't feel feel right if someone got injured or hurt or died by just watching a YouTube video and thinking that they could you know, reproduce what we're doing. Uh, Dan and I have both, we've probably got six or seven certifications under our belt because we've been repelling for over 30 years each. I know Logan's your son. Do you ever worry about him going out on rope access outside of that swing stage? Absolutely not. He's had all the certifications and also we brought him through a year process before we even let him go on ropes. He was on the roof with us for a year at Highlight and then once he was ready we sent him through the Sprat certification and then once he learned the ropes, had his certification, then he went over. We're updated with all the new safety equipment. We change our ropes out once a year even though it, it says that you can have them for three years. Uh, whether it's my son or just an employee, uh, it's all the same requirements. You have to be certified before we let you go over. You have to have your swing stage certification before we let you go up. We don't just send you out there and uh, hope for the best. Because safety is definitely our first priority. So you hear rope access quite a bit. And the important thing to know is rope access is not limited to the sign industry specific. Rope access is just used for any time there's a hard to reach or hard to access spot. Sometimes it's easier just to get in with a guy on two ropes to get the job done. So something as simple and straightforward as just making a power connection it's really difficult with the way the letters were set up. So really the only other way you could have reached this is with a crane and a man basket, or if you had a, a swing stage that went over the roof. Rope access really uh, was kind of the only way that you could have made this wire connection. Well, it's official. Logan is insane. 
But in the end, Highlight Services did an amazing job, and now that sign looks awesome. That's teamwork, baby. Hey. Yeah. You know how the guy on the camera asked me uh, information about Dale? Yeah. Anything I knew about Dale? Should I tell him that he was in Playgirl? Uh, Back in the early uh, 90s? Is he going to put a hold on our check? Uh, maybe I won't tell him. What? <laughs> <laughs> Are we? Oh shit, we're mic'd. <laughs>